People who have had transplants and their caregivers speak about their experiences in this program. The patient seen demonstrating the transplant process is an actor. The following information is an educational aid only. It is not intended as medical advice for individual conditions or treatments. Your experience may differ from the experiences depicted in this program. Talk to your health care provider before following any medical regimen to see if it is safe and effective for you. In the last chapter, we saw how healthy blood stem cells are collected for your transplant. The next step is to prepare your body to receive them. This is called conditioning. There are two goals of conditioning. One is to kill off as many diseased cells as possible throughout your body. The other is to prepare your body for the transplanted blood stem cells. To condition your body, a chemical is put into your bloodstream. This is called chemotherapy. Some patients also undergo radiation therapy. Conditioning is like a farmer getting rid of weeds before planting. In this case, the weeds are diseased cells. The chemotherapy is the weed killer. The seeds are the transplanted stem cells. Ideally, they plant themselves in the marrow and yield a crop of healthy blood cells. Unfortunately, along with cancer cells, Certain types of normal cells are damaged by chemotherapy, radiation, or both. But your body is more able to replace the normal cells, while the cancer cells are more likely to be destroyed. There's no guarantee that conditioning will destroy all the cancer cells in your body, but it may slow the spread of your cancer or even put it into remission, allowing the transplant to extend your life. The normal cells of your immune system are damaged by chemotherapy, this makes you more likely to get infections for a time. Medications are prescribed to help protect you until your body has replaced the cells of your immune system. Chemotherapy is usually given through the catheter in your chest. Your transplant physician will determine how many days of chemotherapy you'll have. He or she will also determine if radiation will be part of your conditioning regimen and how many days it will be done. Two to three days is the average. He or she will also decide whether you'll stay in the hospital between treatments. You may know other people who have had chemotherapy or radiation therapy, but different diseases are treated in different ways. Your experience may be different from theirs. Chemotherapy and radiation have a number of unpleasant side effects. They typically aren't felt until about three to seven days after the treatments. However, nausea and vomiting may occur during the chemotherapy infusion or that night. Anti-nausea medications are typically given. We'll talk more about side effects and ways to help you cope with them in the next chapter. Once your body has been properly conditioned, the stem cell infusion can begin. The actual process is so ordinary that in a way it is a letdown because you have built it up so much inside yourself and it is so important to you. I mean, I thought, this is my life, you know. Your stem cells, or your donors, were frozen in a preservative. They will be thawed before infusion. The preservative will go into your body along with the cells. It's important to flush the byproducts of the freezing process out of your body. So on the day of your stem cell infusion, you'll first receive fluids through an IV, probably for around four hours. This is called hydration. Next, the stem cells in the preservative are given through your catheter. The length of time this takes varies from one person to another. You'll receive hydration again after the infusion, usually for another four hours. Some people have side effects or reactions during the infusion. The preservative is responsible for most of these. A flushed face is the most common side effect. You might also experience cramping in your abdomen or a feeling of pressure in your chest. You might feel lightheaded or nauseated. Tell your nurse if you're feeling uncomfortable. Medications may help relieve some side effects. Sometimes the cells in the preservative gather in the lungs, or the lungs react to the chemical preservatives. The nurse will monitor your oxygen levels during and after the infusion. If those levels drop, you might be given oxygen. Serious side effects during the infusion are not typical, although they do occur on rare occasions. 
Your blood pressure, heart rate, and other vital signs will be monitored. One of the side effects after the infusion is a strong taste and a noticeable smell on your breath and skin. That too comes from the preservative. It smelled like creamed corn and I couldn't smell it personally, but yeah, you have the preservative in the stem cells that makes you just kind of exude it out through everything. You breathe it and it comes out your pores. And I think it lasted a day or two, uh, maybe a couple of days. I never noticed it, but the people around me could, could smell it. The byproducts of the freezing process may cause your urine to be reddish. The goal is to keep hydrating your body until your urine is yellow. This sometimes happens after the second hydration. If this occurs, you may need to stay overnight in the hospital for continued hydration. You might also stay overnight if you've had an allergic reaction to the preservative or the healthcare team wants to monitor you closely. Most people do not need to stay overnight, but your caregiver will need to take you back to where you're staying. It will not be safe for you to drive during most of the transplant process because of the effects of certain medications. Talk to your health care team about when you can begin driving again. Ideally, after your stem cell infusion, the stem cells will begin moving into your bone marrow and engraftment will begin. In the coming weeks, your blood will be checked frequently to see how many blood cells they are producing. In the next chapter, we'll talk about how to protect your health and cope with side effects during this time.